Hey, what's up, guys? Gons here with this week's word of encouragement, the last one of 2017. It's been a wild year, but I think this passage could help you through the evening for some of you that might be going out and doing things. It comes from 1 Peter 4, verses 3 through 6. Here's what it says. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For the reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Now the most radical thing about actual true biblical Christianity is that it demands you to live a radically different lifestyle from what the world promotes as good or normal. There are still many believers out there who are living double-minded, and if it wasn't for the grace of God and the mercy of God, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. But Peter goes on to list these things that should be marks of a past life for a Christian. Things like lewdness, which denotes excesses of all kinds of evil, lacking self-restraint, and almost the flaunting of the sin, even publicly. And we are seeing this culturally. And if you need evidence of things like lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries, well, just look around tonight. And just remember this passage and think that it was written 2,000 years ago, which means not much has changed in the human heart. The condition of sin remains infecting humanity. But for us who are believers, we're saying that, yeah, perhaps our physical body is in that state, but our spirit and our soul resides in heaven. And this gets into some pretty heady stuff that I won't get into here, but it does tend to provide perhaps a different outlook to passages that talk about storing your treasures in heaven. And for many of us who choose not to participate in all this crazy debauchery that happens, especially at the new year, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation. And that's true. When the world looks at godly living in general, they think it's weird. And another word for flood of dissipation is wastefulness. And if you really think about it, the pursuits of the fleshly desires ultimately is a waste of time because we ought to be focusing on the kingdom of heaven. So the folks that see us strange that we don't participate also speak evil of us and it's because what christians stand for convicts those who revel in those sins and so they don't like that and so what they do is speak evil to try to deflect their own evil then it says they will give an account to him who is ready to judge for this reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead this is really interesting. Peter says that because of the eternal judgment of God, the gospel was preached to the dead. And this is consistent with an earlier chapter from 1 Peter, where it talks about Jesus preaching to the spirits in prison and to the faithful dead, who at the time were in Abraham's bosom. And this is also a fulfillment of prophecy with Jesus fulfilling Psalm 68, 18 and Ephesians 4, 8, where he would proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So the interesting kind of personal eschatology that could be drawn from this is that even to the dead at the time, the gospel was preached so that there is a distinct separation between the righteous dead and the dead in sin, where the dead in sin are part of those who act in this list of the will of the Gentiles, whereas those who live according to God in the spirit our destination, our home is in heaven, and that's why we ought to store our treasure in heaven, focus on the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is already within us, as it states in Luke 17, 21. And if we start to understand the dimensionality of this, about how when we're saved, it means part of our non-physical being already resides in heaven, and we can absolutely take comfort in that and be encouraged to spread the kingdom of God here on earth. And going into 2018, I hope passages like this inspire as well as encourage 
those of you who have been part of this channel for many months, many years, thank you so much for supporting me and keeping me in your prayers. And if you sit through the ads, thank you for doing that as well. And of course, a shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me directly on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. And I pray that you all have a blessed new year.